He knows they know. Staring at each other through the national anthem. The stare down, of course, so customary before these fights. And here we go, round one. Hagler, right off the bat, attempting to get inside. He'd love to be able to pin Hearns on the ropes if he can. A more aggressive start by Hagler. Look at him, right for the body. Marvin Hagler only wants the body, and he bangs Marvin. Oh, Hearns may have hurt him with a right hand. Hurts hurt another Hagler. right. Hearns hits him with an uppercut. Hagler He's hurt. is hurt. Hagler is stunned. Hearns got inside. Hit him with a right uppercut. Marvin ties him up. Marvin Hagler is still hurt. So it was Hagler coming out like a bullet. A good left by Hagler, but Hearns didn't flinch. Marvin going for the body. Wild first round. Wow, what a shot. And it was Hagler who initiated it, not Thomas Hearns. And a left good by Hagler. Hearns comes back. Another right. That one stunned Hearns. What a first minute of the fight. Tommy Hearns has been able to drop that right hand in, and it has hurt Hagler, a surprise to many people. Another right hand from Hearns. Hearns moving. Hagler still pursuing, comes in with a right. Missing with a left hook. Here's where I believe Hagler should turn to righty. He could block that right hand easier, and he would land his own left hook. Hearns with a devastating punch. Swelling near Hagler's left eye. Again, Tommy trying to come inside the hands of oh, Hagler. Low blow by Hearns. Hagler still looking for the body. A right by Hagler. Good right got in. He has Hearns where he'd love to keep him on the ropes, but Tommy comes off oh. easily. Another good right by Hearns. Hagler is now shaking those right hands off, though, Al. He was stung a little early, and he's normally a slow starter. He's also bleeding. Hagler is cut. Hagler is cut. Bridge of the nose. Hagler hitting him low. He is banging the body well. He is taking shots to the head. He blocks that right. Hearns tries to come in with the uppercut, and Hagler ties him up with a minute to go in a wild first round. There's blood all over Marvin Hagler's face. Can't tell where it's coming from. I thought it started from the bridge of the nose originally, but blood all over the face of Hagler here in round one. That's but Hagler has him on the ropes. Hagler working on him. Hagler relentless, but Hearns trying to box his way out. Half a minute to go in round one. How this far is, can this one go? That's very far at his pace. This is where Hagler wants him, but Hearns counter punching off those ropes fairly effectively. Oh, tremendous first round. Hagler pinning him to the ropes, working on him, but Hearns uppercutting again. Hagler bloody. A tremendous hurt. sensational first round as Hearns gets hurt. Hearns got stunned. Hagler was stunned early in the round. Great first round. Wow. Incredible. Perhaps one of the best in middleweight history. As we look at it, that was where it came, I believe, from that uppercut from Tommy Hearns. That was early in the round, but now later, Marvin Hagler digging to the body and throwing a right hook. Fought most of that round, as, in fact, all of it is a southpaw. He took the action to Hearns, a surprise early. Well, the first round lived up to all the hype, and then so. Round okay, watch your feet. Watch your feet, watch your feet. Knockdowns through four rounds, the Peta's dropped Baranchik three times. Baranchik started it all off, dropping Zapata twice in the first round. But at the end of the day, there's another knockdown that could have counted for Zapata too, as now here comes Baranchik. Round five of a scheduled 10 round fight. Ooh, Baranchik gets clipped once again with the left. Look at here comes the combinations and angles from Jose Zapata. People look at him as a boxer. He said, there's some dog in me. That's what I'm talking about. Well, he's showing it tonight and he's fighting. You know, and this is the level, this is the level that I see that Cepeda's on now. He got that from the Ramirez fight. That's the experience that he gained. He said, I didn't do enough in the back end. I'm gonna stand my ground this time. And that's what he's doing in spots. We always ask fighters, cause they'll say, oh, what's different? The experience, the experience. He quantified it. He said, yeah. the fact that Ramirez showed that will down the stretch. He wanted it more, and that's what oh I got to do. That's who I have to be, and that's who he is right now, landing that left hook. But Baranchik continues to be extremely dangerous here in round number five. 
This is a gut check type of fight for Jose Zapata. We talked about him having all the tools to outbox you, but did he have enough to dig deep down and want to be that guy? Tonight, he's being that guy. He's being forced to be that guy by Baranchik. Yes, and that's is. not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And this is the way you get fans. Many fans don't want to watch you. You got to stay your ground and fight. He's a superior boxer, but he also has punching power. And he's choosing the right spots right now. It's a pay to choosing the right spots and catching Baranchik and hurting him. Now, Baranchik has got incredible oh recovery stamina. powers and stamina because oh he's been down and none of them has been a cheap knockdown. No, no, right on the chin. Get caught right on the buzzer and he gets up. Comes Baranchik. He's trying to get Zapata against the ropes. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to wear him down. He's trying to get him to that halfway point. He wants Zapata to down himself. If he can make it past there and if his condition it can hold up, Zapata could be in trouble down the stretch. Whoa, oh, no, it's a big right hand from Baranchik. And it's a knockdown because the ropes held him up. Okay, here we go. All right, so five rounds. Oh my goodness. More than five knockout knockdowns. No knockout yet because these two guys have a heart. Oh! Baranchik is still down. Finish. Listen, this is the best fight that I've ever witnessed live, honestly. Beautiful shot right there from Baranchik. Nice overhand right. He's always dangerous. When you're in the ring with a puncher, especially a determined one to land that big bum, it's always dangerous for a fighter. You know, and that was a knockdown right there for Baranchik. He was able to create it. Beautiful shot catching. You know, you see the little angle he was on when he landed that right hand. And the ropes held him up. That's why it was a knockdown. And I said, very, you know, show Vary that right hand. Vary the right hand. And he did that. He looped it right there on Cepeda. Cepeda never saw it coming. Cepeda stepped back, gave him some distance to land that right hand. And then after that came the end. And this is the end right here. Nice little check hook right there after the jab. And then the big boom right on the chin from Cepeda. Check hook. Boom. Okay. You see the head of Baranchik. He never saw it coming, but look at the leg right there behind him. But his body collapsed in midair. He was knocked out in midair. This is what's brutal about it. He's knocked out there. there. The right leg is completely discombobulated, and then he smacks his head on the canvas at full strength. This is the best fight that I've ever witnessed live. I've never seen a fight this dramatic Live, I've seen him on TV. I had one in 2013. The fighter tonight, Cepeda, will get fighter of the year in 2020, in my opinion. No one's gonna top that. Huge knockdown by Tyson Fury. Again, you have one minute to recover. Can Deontay Wilder recover? Does not look very solid as of right now. Yeah, he doesn't look, he doesn't look steady on his feet. He's walking around, he needs to keep his feet, you know, shoulder width apart. And on his toes, he needs to be on his toes. But it's a fine line because Wilder's still dangerous. Wilder is dangerous, but he's hurt. He's in the corner, and now the Gypsy King is mauling him once again, just as he did in the second fight. This, this is where the Gypsy King should take a step back. Because he's got Deontay in the corner, Deontay can't go anywhere. This is where he should throw his combinations. That's the third time Tyson Fury has put Wilder on the deck. Twice in the second fight, third round with a big right hand, the fifth round with a hook to the body. That was a right hand that put Wilder down this Let time go. around. Let him go. Stop. Stop. Can't say it's not exciting, guys. Yeah. Wilder pawing now with the jab. Stop. Let go. Stop. Stop. Fascinating change in this fight where, again, Fury Don't is backing up here. a lot of the Don't time but answering with a jab and a right hand and a thunderous, at times, right hand. Look, let me tell you, that's the mistake when you throw power punches early. You get tired quicker. Well, it's not just that, Lennox. You gotta understand that, that 
Wilder has a lot more mass on him, too. Good body shot right there from Tyson Fury. Very so he's got to fatigue in. quicker than he even normally would without the mass. Yeah, this this is where weightlifting doesn't work for boxing. You got to do the right weightlifting. Fury doesn't look steady, guys. He backs up now. Fury gets him up against the ropes. Although you have to say, Wilder shows real guts. Again, he never quit in the second fight. He didn't want it to be stopped. He protested immediately. And he got up and he survived that third round. I'll tell you what, the ref's got his work cut out for him in this fight. lamora has got to earn his money tonight. And he's got the big guys, so he's doing a lot of pushing. Oh, right oh, right oh, by Wilder. Get on the shot. Douglas Fury. Whoa. Wilder shot. with the answer. Whoa. He's hurt. Come here. Give me your ball. Fury says, yes, of course I'm all right. Big right hand He's and a thunderous though. answer by Wilder. Fury is hurt. Uppercut. And a hook. Wilder with his big chance. Can he get the title back? Big right hand from Fury. Wilder's got to get... And down goes Fury again. He's hurt, fellas. Oh. Wow. Fury Seven. back up, final seconds. Hey, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Come here, give me your gloves. That's the end of the You're round. Okay? Time. What's that? Mouthpiece, Tim. Mouthpiece. Tim. Thank you. Box. <laughs> this is round six, the Colonel Bob Sheridan. Along with Carlos Palomino and Christina Poncha, you're watching top-ranked boxing worldwide here from the Home Depot Center in Carson, California, just outside the city of Los Angeles. It's a cool spring evening here in Los Angeles area. It's almost a mist in the air. In the ocean not too far away, yes. and the fog rolls in. This is round six. Tim Bradley in the first two rounds was in a heap of trouble. Didn't get knocked down, but all but did. Let his hand go. Let him go. And the fog really rolling in here now. <laughs> Fighters are well warmed up, so I suppose it feels great to them. This Tim showing a hand speed again. This is great stuff now for Tim Bradley. Minute gone. And the sixth round of this scheduled 12 round world championship fight. Paco Bacasel, president of the WBO, watching down in uh, Puerto Rico. Luis Perez is assistant with the WBO. Floyd Carlos, you're saying? It's still dangerous, I think, for him to be inside Almost. fighting this fight. But the only thing that, that I see different is that he is moving his, from side to side. He's taking. Shoulders uh, from side to side, and, you know, throwing, standing up and throwing combinations. But you know, unless he feels like Wilson is not punching as hard now as he was in the, in the beginning, uh, it's still dangerous to be in, dangerous to be in there that close. Well, he's landing so many more punches than Ruslan is. I mean, I, I mentioned in the last round that Ruslan's face, while it's not cut, it's really popping. Oh, up. I mean, look at these. These are solid shots, and Bradley's making you miss. And again. Provodnikov, uh, 22 victories, but he's never fought anybody in the class. I mean, Tim Bradley is truly a world-class fighter, and he almost had him out in the first and again in the second round. Uh, that's what's exciting about uh, professional boxing. Anything can happen, and anything still can happen in this fight, by the way. Bradley's got to fight very, very smart from the rest of the way out. A clip with the left hand, and here's Provodnikov on his assault now. And Bradley does the smart thing. He hangs on and walking back. But was he hurt? Look at his legs, Kyle. They, they don't look great as he has to hang on. Uh, Bradley's hurt in this round. Oh, he got hit with the right hand again. Provednikov letting it fly again. Oh, they're just punching it out. Again, this isn't Bradley's fight. This is Provednikov's fight. Look at this guy. And Bradley says, come on, let it go. Wrong thing. Ah, great round, but wrong thing. That's Provednikov's round. Even after four, I got it even after six. Look at this stuff. 
Let's see where, they, where it happens here because it's changing right there. Look at the end of the round now. The right hand lands. Yeah. He lands one back, but he's Tim is hurt at this stage. I don't know, Doc. Man, Man this is rock and sock and robots right there. <laughs> Can't stop the fight. There is the opening bell, and we are underway. And as expected, it gets started in the middle of the ring. And Nigel Ben lands a right to get this one underway. Nigel Ben wearing the sequin trunks. I ran Barkley in the red. He's down. Not only is he down, but he hit his man while he was down, and he gave valuable time to Carl to uh, Barkley. Although the referee did pick up the count on six. And Carlos Padilla is our referee today. A shocking first round. Barely underway. Again, Ben in the sequin trunks. The blade, Iran Barkley wearing the red. Iran has shown recuperative powers in the past, Dan. Was getting beat up badly by Thomas Hearns when he stopped him. But he really looked very wooden when he came out of the corner. And there. By Iran Barkley. And now it's Barkley backing Ben into the ropes. A good counter punch by Barkley, a good left hand. Oh, both men are hurt. And check it out. A loaded up right hand by Ben misses. A couple short counters. Those punches, Alex, from Barkley don't look like they have a whole lot on them. Well, they're having an effect on Nigel Ben. I mean, Nigel Ben's chin has been suspect since the loss to Watson, as we said. I was talking about just those last couple. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, they're nothing but arm punches. Well, we knew that a lot of big punches were going to be thrown, but oh, and there's a good right hand by Ben. Got over the glove of Barkley. Iran's punches are just Iran's punches are just painfully slow, Dan. I mean, he's throwing oh. them. Again, an uppercut by Ben, and then it comes over the top with a right and scores. Moran Barkley is a fighter who's always had a warrior's heart. He's always had a superior will, whether he won or lost, and he's going to need it here. He's lucky that he's in with an opponent whose chin is not rock solid. Combination of right hands, and you can see Nigel Ben close it, and he hits Barkley with Barkley's and, down. And that should definitely be a point deduction. He's been warned already in this round about hitting a man when he's down, and that is grounds, in my opinion, Dan, if he landed a harder punch with his qualification. That's just outrageous. Carlos Padilla yells at Ben, but does not take a point away. A legitimate knockdown. A reminder, the three knockdown rule is in effect, and there goes there goes Barkley down to the ground. Is that the third knockdown, Alex? No, second knockdown. He's stopping it. Yes. Remember, he knocked him into the ropes right as we started. That was the third knockdown. The fight is over. A first round win for Nigel Ben. I assume that the first big blow by Ben, which knocked Barkley back into the ropes, should have been yep. ruled a knockdown. The ropes kept him from going No, no, down. you're right. I mean, he took three counts, my recollection is. The three knockdown rule is a staple of the WBO. It is how Nigel Ben beat Doug DeWitt with three knockdowns in the eighth round. And now with three knockdowns in round number one, he defeats Iran Barkley. Well, let's count him. Here comes the first action. Barkley scoring the right, almost a right hook. And down went Iran. And he took a count. There, I mean, you know, that to me, Dan, I, I absolutely can't tell you how wrong that is, what uh, Nigel Ben did. There's the right hand counter punch. But hitting uh, afterwards, but you can't dispute it being a knockdown. No, I can't dispute right. it being a knockdown, but right. I'll tell you something. And there's number two. That, that to me, I can, agree. is a disqualification. I agree. I mean, who, who can say how much effect that punch had on Iran Barkley? Been warned already in the round. I think you should have a punch taken away for the first one. I just think it's wrong. I'm not saying it would have changed the outcome of the fight. Right. I think it looked to me like Nigel Ben was 
was going to come back, uh, I mean, was going to win the fight anyway, based upon you know being the younger, fresher, faster fighter. And you can but, see Carlos Padilla there, Alex. Look to the official at the side to get confirmation that that was the third knockdown. Don't forget, coming up here on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll have marvelous Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard. A stunner here. We knew it wouldn't go the distance, but we thought it'd go longer than this. We are headed into round six, approaching the halfway point of a fight that has turned into very much a chess match. They exchange left hooks. Will it heat up? There were some intense moments. Oh, big left hook sends Corte down. Oscar De La Hoya lands the left hook and sends Corte down. I don't know if Corte is hurt as much as off balance. Let's see. Earlier when they exchanged left hooks, De La Hoya got the worst of it. This time it was Corte who opened himself up. Big right by Corte. Right and left by De La Hoya, but Corte comes back with his own. They rumble in the corner. It's not a chess match anymore. round. Both men were knocked down, but Corte seemed to land the bigger punches and seemed to land more of them. And the Corte jab keeps going. Here is where De La Hoya was sent by Corte down as they exchanged left hooks. De La Hoya off, or Corte off balance, got hit with the left hook, but turn around is fair play. There was a left hook by Corte, sending De La Hoya down, right on the chin. And there's no doubt Marco Antonio Brera has staying power. If you take a look at his fight against Kennedy McKinney in 96, voted one of the fights of 1990s, took a sustained beating from Kennedy McKinney before turning down the rugged challenger. Right there, Morales throws a couple of jabs with a good lift that landed, partially blocked, but it did connect. There's a good right hand that landed on the back. Morales using his jab. Barrera trying to wait. He's jabbing himself. Morales moving, sticking his jab out. There, he stays there without throwing a punch, and he got connected with a good right uppercut by, by Barrera. And now there seems to be some blood over the nose of Morales, and he eats a good right hand. But right there, Morales, Morales wasn't having an exchange right there. Heavy exchange on the ropes. Morales working well, fighting off the ropes. The only bad thing about Morales is that he's dropping his hands while and he's throwing wild. 
He's connected some good shots, but at the same time, he's being connected. Right there, he sticks a good left jab. Oh, good right good hand right by Barrera. Right. There's a good uppercut, a good right uppercut. Right there, he shouldn't have stopped. He should have started, stepped again and with another right. It seems like it might be some blood coming out of Barrera's nose, too. No, I'm wrong. Heavy exchange is Morales coming shot. on. See the little side steps. You see, if you stay there in front of Barrera, he's going to beat you up. But if you use side steps, you'll, you'll hurt Barrera. Morales coming on. Barrera shaking for the first time. Good, over, good overhand right. But you see, there's another good right hand. Another good right hand. You see, Morales is sidestepping, so he's not giving any opportunity for Valera to connect any shots. Because Valera, what he's looking for is for somebody to stay right in front of him that way he can connect those uppercuts. Good uppercut by Valera. Here comes I mean, Morales. Morales is, he has, he has Valera pretty stubborn, pretty dazed a little. Oh, oh big right hand. hand. Shot. But Aaron does what Morales doesn't look like he's hurt. But there we go again. We're going to see which one has a stronger jaw. This is a battle of attrition. Who is going to outlast each other? Champion versus champion. And both Swing of them fighting like champions. Swinging from the heels. Half a minute to go, round number five. How long can they last? It seems like both of them got tired during, during all that pressure and all that fighting that they were doing. They were swinging away. There. Uh-oh. He, he swings it. Both of these fighters, they know that they're in there for a war tonight. They've been connected with good, very good shots. It looked like they kind of wore down a little bit. But they, uh, Morales is moving. There comes a little couple of shots that, that were that were thrown by Morales that, that missed. There's more there's another shot. That's the well an early candidate for round of the year. Round number five was a doozy. And now Morales here with the overhand right. There's a straight right that connected shots that were being blocked. There's a good right uppercut, a good left, I mean a right hook. There's a couple of shots there that were thrown, but then here comes Marera. Barrera coming in there, working his way. Ooh. Left hook, right, straight, right, left, left uppercut. Now Manny beats Marco Antonio Barrera. Didn't and even win a title. And didn't win a title. Who everybody recognized as the world featherweight champion. Left-hander comes out, he's wearing the flaming trunks. Marquez a more subtle white color with the red trim. Scheduled for 12 rounds. And I think it's going to be like this. <laughs> well, that's why Pacquiao has the flames on his trucks, because he comes out blazing. Every fight he fights is the same. He's got a lot of energy. He's going to be real busy, moving in and out. He's not a runner. No. He has a lot of movement. Well, what do you think the keys to this fight are, Lester? Well, I think for Marquez, he's got to establish that jab early. The way Marco Antonio Barrera beat, beat uh, Nassim. Good Nassim combination. Ahmed. The way he beat Nassim Ahmed is establishing that jab. And against the left-hander, if you can establish that jab against him, it'll help him a lot. And you keep Pacquiao off of him, and he'll be able to land those combinations and those counter punches. What's a Pac-Man got to do? Not a Pac-Man's got to do what he always does. He's got to <laughs> rush, he's gotta rush in. He's, he's got to be careful not to get too reckless, though, because he can get hurt by Marquez. He's a big puncher. And he's got to use his speed advantage. He's got to be careful not to stay inside too long. And, uh, but he's got to be careful when he throws that left hand, which is a very powerful left hand, not to overcommit. Another good combination from Juan Manuel Marquez, 30-year-old fighter who waited a long time to win those titles. Finally got one against Manuel Medina right here in Las Vegas, February 1st of last year. Then backed it up with a victory over Derek Smoke Gaynor. Heck out! There's that left hand. Comes in with a left hand and puts Marquez on the seat of his pants. Just that fast. Marquez has been down before against some pretty good fighters. Fred Norwin knocked him down. Daryl Pickney, a good German fighter, knocked him down. But he appears to be all right right here. Well, this is the thing. Down goes Marquez again with another left. But this is the first time he's been down twice in a round. And there's a long way to go. Now he's confident he's got to be think, shot. Yeah, he's got to be in a little bit of trouble here. He gets knocked down again. The referee might end the fight. We didn't even get started, and Pacquiao was all over him. That could be it. That one hurt him. 
Only 30 seconds left yeah, in the round. I don't think he's going to make it through the round. He gets hit with another left hand. That's going to be it. But Pacquiao's got to be careful. Marcus can hurt you too. I don't know if the referee let it go if he gets knocked down for a fourth time. 15 seconds left in the round. Pacquiao just comes in and just unloads. I mean, this is no funny business whatsoever. Marquez has been down three times in the first round. Oh, Pacquiao. That's it. Marquez still standing. Pacquiao staring at him from across the ring, not going to his quarter immediately. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe he was still standing. You'll see the power of Pacquiao coming here. He has a huge left hand, and that's where everybody gets into trouble with Pacquiao. That is his bread and butter, that left hand. He's got to be careful in this fight, though. If he lays in there with that left hand, he gets he, he gets too careless. He could very well be countered by Marquez, who's a big puncher himself. Tony doesn't want this team to be decided because he took a point away as close as it is. I think it's a, it's better to err on the side of caution as long as it's not as long as it's not a really severe low blow that's got him bent over and has to stop. I I, I just hate to see points taken away on that. But if there's another one, I think he will be taken. I think he will. You're right. Corrales, despite us. Oh, there it goes. There it goes, Corrales. A shot. Accurate left Three, hook to the face for Castillo. Five, Will he get up? Six, seven, eight. Come to me, come to me. You all right? You want to continue? Okay, here we go. Time. Come in. His mouthpiece was knocked out. He'll get a few extra put seconds here. Put it in. Joe Goosen smartly, to very slowly, putting it back in. It was a one punch knockdown. Corrales in deep trouble, obviously. He's in big trouble. I think he's done. This is really becoming a huge round for Castillo if, it, if the bell. He's taking a point away from Castillo, from Corrales, for spitting out the mouthpiece. So now for losing the mouthpiece so. twice. He didn't even know what happened. Here we go. I think he, this could be a 10-6 round then. Could be. He didn't know he dropped the mouthpiece. He didn't know it. Boy, Castillo looking to finish this thing up. Corrales, a desperate fighter, and a right hand for Corrales staggers Castillo. Oh my goodness. Can he survive this? A left hook, Castillo staggered once again. Both fighters, but Castillo won't go down. He's never been down. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. Corrales, Castillo's wobbly. Now here comes Corrales. Unbelievable! 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 Diego Corrales comes back in a round he was losing 10 to 6 and wins the fight and knocks out Jose Luis Castillo. I just think we witnessed the greatest fight in the history of boxing. I have never seen anything like that. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've never seen that. Ever. Ever. Let's take a look at the first knockdown. As you can see, Corrales badly hurt. His eye completely closed. Taking a beating and down he goes. We were wondering if he'd be able to get up. Left hook, down he went. You could see the pain on his face. He barely beat the count on that one. But then somehow, some way, he turned it around after the second knockdown. And it came with one big shot.
Now, after this knockdown, by the way. I didn't think he was getting up, Rich. After the second knockdown, he had trouble getting up. He barely beat the 10 count. But then look at this. He wobbles Castillo a little bit, and then he hits him that left hook. And Corrales realized that he had a man hurt in front of him, even though he was badly hurt. Referee Tony Weeks stepped in, stopped the fight, and that was it. Castillo's eyes are rolling back in his head. Good stoppage, Tony. Absolutely, absolutely. Good I, stoppage, Tony. And there was just a couple of fans, a few fans here actually booing. I, I can't imagine even, I can't conceive even of what they're booing about. It's disgusting that they would boo any of this. There are no losers. I, I don't even, I can't, still cannot fathom, can't understand what we just saw. A few rounds to the left. Round 12. Oh. Ali starts the round every round, scoring heavily. coasting a little bit here and Ali is scoring on him <laughs> two minutes left in the round showed signs of tiring for the first time in that round. He had Ali on the ropes a couple of times and uh, he didn't seem to have any zip. Now that's just my opinion. What do you think? And he talked about how disappointed he was, that he didn't land a single blow that could have turned the first fight around. He actually questioned whether or not he would continue on in his career. And then he thought, I want to be at the top level again. But sometimes, those tiny seeds of doubt, they can sprout when you get into spots like this. Yeah, I don't think those seeds that we're talking about are, are tiny. I think they're, they're major, and they're laying dormant in the mind of Murata. And Rob Brandt, the burden is on him to bring those seeds of doubt to the surface early in this fight to let Murata know the first fight was not a fluke. 
I'm the champion, I have one defense, and I'm here to defend my title again on your home turf. Having heard those comments here, as there's an early pace being set by Brandt that is similar to what we saw in the first fight, Tim, do you think that Murata should have gone straight back into this rematch or had a stay-busy comeback? I think that he should have had a stay-busy comeback fight and, you know, to get prepared for Rob Brandt and what he's going to see. But coming straight back at Brandt, that just shows you a lot about his character and the fact that he wants to win his world championship back. He's a more aggressive Murata than we saw early on in yes. the first fight. Much more aggressive as he's closing the gap already. That's a big adjustment for him. He sat on the outside in the first fight, and now he's inching closer and attacking quicker, but he's doing it behind punches now. And you see Rob Brand, he's just real offensive. He's gonna let his hands go. So the more Murata pressures, the more offense you're gonna see come from Rob Brand. It's a really good looking first round of a championship fight. Sometimes this is what you get in a rematch. They pick up right where they left off, and such is the case with Brandt and a better looking Murata. Yeah, well rematches are all about adjustments, and we see Murata making the adjustment right now in this first round. He's not laying back, allowing the motor of Rob Brandt to get going. He jumped on Rob Brandt, and right now, Rob Brandt is processing and trying to figure out how Murata came out so fast. Yeah, absolutely. Rob Brandt is wondering what's going on. It's not the way it's supposed to be, but he's still determined and going down to the body right there is Rob Brandt to slow down Murata. Listen, Brandt is still very much on the pace that he wants to keep. It's just an improved version of Murata that's against him. Murata is moving, has that high guard, and following him out and smothering Rob Brandt as often as possible. Good body work that time from Murata. Closes the gap again, a straight right hand to the body, right hand upstairs, and then a four-punch combination from Brandt. Both men opening up, and Murata scores well. And there's a short left hand on the inside from Brandt. Murata dicks to the body. What an excellent, excellent first round of the rematch. His favorite fighter, Wilfredo Gomez. All right, here we go. Both guys are decked out in white and pink, so the guy with the pink on his shoes is Juan Man Lopez. With what looks more primarily pink to you, but he's got some silver on the trunks, is Bernabe Concepcion. So to the right of your screen is Lopez Concepcion with his back to you now. The taller of the two men is Lopez. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with the champ, Juan Laporte. Glad that you're going to be with us here at the Coliseo Jose Miguel Agrelo in Ato Rey in Puerto Rico. This is the first of the 12 rounds scheduled WBO Featherweight Championship at 126 pounds. Neither guy has opened up just yet. Oh! Right away, Concepcion is touched up. Concepcion is squared up. And Lopez has shown his power right away. He did. He shows his power, but you see right after that, he goes right to the head again. He should be working to the body so he could get the guy in the head. That's coming from one of the great body punches of all time, don't forget. And right to the body goes Concepcion, but right through it comes okay. Lopez, and he's down. He caught him with a shot, and Concepcion's down in the first round. And you know something? He's hurt. He, he is. tagged he him with a good shot. Head. Hit him right in the head. The count's up to eight. He's okay. So Lopez's power is significant right away. Concepcion wants to fight as hard as he can. Loading up the shots is Juan Man Lopez. Caught him in the chin again. This doesn't look like it's going to take long. Boy, Juan Manuel Lopez looks huge against Concepcion. Concepcion got to grab on. He pushes down. And referee Luis Pavon right on top of him. Loads up the right hand. Whistles past the chin. Lopez. Lopez took a shot, but he right now in the stage will take one to get it in. You see the head go down to Concepcion, and Juan Manuel comes right with the uppercut. He wants to finish this off in the first round. Oh, he is. If he gets another shot like that, it, th this fight will be at the, the end in the first round. But uh, Kid is getting his composure back together, and Man Juan Manuel Lopez is just taking his time. He, he feels that he could hurt him anytime he wants. 
Uh, he knows he's got the power, catches him with a left hand again. Don't forget for the southpaw, that's the power shot. He's all <laughs> over him. Concepcion better do something. He could give Pepon the reason to no step body in. Shot. There you go, a body shot. Adam, he oh, look, oh, look at that. Look at this. Look at that. Manuel no body gets shot. knocked oh. down with no body Dang. shots. Concepcion Dang. shows his own power Dang. and drops Dang. Juan Manuel Lopez. Dang. So after oh, all that, that, Concepcion wins the first round. Well, <laughs> you can't get too overconfident, right? Wow. How about that? Let's see. As Concepcion gets hit with a left hook. Wanma comes in. Again, no body shots. They're just throwing wild shots here now. And, you know, just accumulation of punch. That wasn't even a clear knockdown. It was a punch before. Let's see this now. Throwing all kinds of shots. Ducks underneath. No. And he catches him with a left hook. No body shots. You're right. You call for that. Here we Remember, so much is on the line here at 140 pounds. Saucedo has been destined for greatness for so long. The hype has been building. A win tonight, and possibly lined up to fight undefeated Maurice Hooker, who just won the belt from Terry Flanagan. Both of these guys made their reputations within the boxing business at the wild card. Years ago, Lenny Z came from Australia. Freddie Roach put him in with Miguel Cotto. And he impressed. Oh, savage shot. Saucedo attacking that head left and right as Lenny Z comes back. Look at the experience now coming in. You want to talk about experience and guts from hurt and battered to now a left hook that has the undefeated hometown kid hurting badly. He better hold up. He better hold. Lenny Z going Look at for this it. action from Lenny Z. Going for broke here in round number four. A big right hand. Alex Saucedo stood up to it somehow. Finally ties up for a moment, but quickly a break. Can you believe this fight? And a cut on Saucedo's right eye as he takes and takes and tries to get more. I asked Lenny Z yesterday, what happens if he loses? There is no losing, he said. Absolutely not. He Pierce. knows this is his last shot. This is basically the Maurice Hooker's title. This is his last shot to get there, to get that title. Squared up, throwing punch after punch after punch. He's going for it. Blood streaming down the face of Saucedo as well as he lands an uppercut. We've talked about Lenny Z's cuts. Salcedo is cut in his last two fights, and this is a gruesome one above his right eye. There you go. Salcedo loves to fight that mid-distance range. You don't like to use his height. Guess what? Lenny Z knows that, and he stays there after every combination, doesn't move his head, and Lenny Z, an aggressive counterpuncher. Salcedo landed a right hand that opened up the cut even worse on Lenny Z, and Lenny Z stands up and just fires back. This is outrageous. Let's see how they finish it up. Let them take it home, boys. You can take your list of round of the year and put it in big marker right now. Here's how it all started. And you see Salcedo jabbing right there, a little bit too close, tried to throw a hook from the middle and got clipped with the right hand. There it is, overhand right. Jabbing or throwing a punch from the middle, whether it's a hook or a jab. Lenny Z stepping right in with the overhand right. He changed levels right there. Look at how clean their faces were at wow. that moment of the fourth round. Emotion from Freddie Roach in the corner that we don't always see from him. The crowd shows its appreciation. And let's see if Tapia is as aggressive as they want him to be. Good hook by Tapia starts off this round. Ayala 
with a good combination. Good combos inside by Pauly. Tapia staying on the inside now. Good double right hooks by Ayala and uppercuts. Pauly Ayala ripping those shots in the inside. Gains the early advantage in this round. Good hook again by Tapia. Tapia rip shots and then as a lefty gets the straight left hand in. Jab and a straight right by Tapia. Both men, look at all they have left here in the 12th round. Throwing good, short, compact combinations. Good shot to the body by Tapia. And Pauli Ayala comes back. Good right hand by Tapia. Both men fighting with skill and enthusiasm. Sometimes that's a rarity. Good hook downstairs, and here's Ayala with the combination. Good jabs by Ayala, or by uh, Tapia as Ayala came in. Good right hand, then a hook by Tapia. Beautiful, oh, nice left hook. May have hurt Ayala momentarily, and a good right by Tapia. This is a war here in the 12th round. A minute left to go. Both men are landing big shots. Wow. This is as good as it gets. Tapia ripping a left hook to the body. Pauli Ayala on rubber legs. Who wouldn't be tired right now? Both men are throwing everything. And if technique is starting to go south, who can blame them after what a war of attrition? Big hook downstairs by Tapia. This is one of the best lower weight fights I have ever seen. Big hook, here comes Ayala, right hand by Tapia. Another right hand. Only 14 seconds left to go. They are leaving it all right here. Big right by Tapia. The crowd will let you know what they think of this fight. It was one of the great Bantamweight fights in ages. Pauli Ayala falls to the mat all in happiness and in exhaustion. Johnny Tapia is lifted up on the shoulders of his people. Trust me, one of the camps will not like this decision. I don't know which way it will go, but it doesn't matter. That was a great boxing match. One of the best you are likely to see. That is Paulie Ayala, the 29-year-old challenger. There is Johnny Tapia and his wife, Teresa, promoter Bob Arum. And this crowd wondering who will win this bout. Both men have about equal support. Johnny Tapia in the last round, getting hit by some shots by Ayala, then coming back with some very big shots, blocking the hook by Ayala. It doesn't get better than this. Here is Pauli Ayala, who had his, his moments in that round as well. Good uppercut. Tapia with the right hand, and then Tapia again throwing the right hand in. That right hand became a huge weapon for Johnny Tapia, but the left of Ayala was also big. Paul Ayala using the straight left hand. That was his, one of his big weapons, that along with the right hook. It is a shame to have a loser in this fight. Of course, it could be a draw, in which case Tapia would, def would keep his title. Great. Respect by both these men. There was some bad blood during the course of this, but I'll tell you what, they have to respect each other's effort. Spectacular effort by those two men. <laughs> Ayala wanted to lift Tapia, now Tapia lifts Ayala. And there's Paulie Ayala returning the favor to Johnny Tapia.
Well, all that, we get some good sportsmanship, too. Who can ask for more? Timmy Lennon Jr. getting ready to give us the decision. I'll tell you what. We did the show. I don't think anybody knows. Here it comes. We've all seen a tremendous 12 rounds of action. No matter who the winner is, they both deserve a round of applause. Polly Ayala and Johnny Tapia, great fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we do have a unanimous decision as the judges agree. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Guy Jutra scores the bout 115 to 114. Judges Dwayne Ford and Fernando Viso both score the bout 116 to 113. All three in favor of the winner. And the new WBA Bantamweight Champion of the World, Holly Ayala. Holly Ayala called the upset in one of the most superb Bantamweight Championship matches you will ever see. Here's Jim Gray. Of this fight, you went toe to toe. Did you expect that he would stand in there like that and fight you this way? I told you I don't care. I just wanted to fight my fight. But that's why I don't believe the critics. I just go by faith, not by sight. I'm a living example, living example. What, 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 what was your strategy? Nobody has beaten Johnny Tapia in 46 fights. You obviously have I something no one you, else has. I told you I never fought him. I, you can't see the tapes and go out the tapes and predict he's gonna fight like that. But see, he, he found me catching him. He gets emotional, so he wanted to get back in the game and fight my fight. Did he, try to, did he try to intimidate you right there at the beginning of the fight when it seemed right after the introductions that he pushed you and punched you? Yeah, you know, hey, I told him, I said, I, don't, I mean, I told everyone, I don't fight until the bell rings. Outside of the fight, outside the fight, we're friends. We're brothers in the Lord. Polly, here it is right here, Polly. Tell us what was going through your mind right there. I thought he was just going to come up there and tag. I said, hey, he wants to fight right now. I said, hey, we can fight before the bell. But no, you know what? I love Johnny. Great fighter, great champion. Like I said, he was the best junior bantamweight in the world, possibly legendary, but I'm the best bantamweight in the world. And he had never faced an opponent like me, never. You were had some, name. You had some awful good in fighting, and it seemed as though you never had to take a step back as we look at the monitor to tell us about it. Well, you know, uh, I was fighting my fight. I was ready for him to either. I did a little boxing. I did a little slugging, more slugging than boxing, but I told you I'm an aggressive boxer. I can counter. Uh, they underestimate me. My punching power keeps them, keeps them humble, and it keeps them at bay. Do you think the three pounds was a big difference for you? Well, what do you think? I mean, I told you it was. I told you if I, if I made 115, I have to cut off my head. Hey, Fort Worth, Dallas Stars, Spurs, and Polly Ayala, baby! It's Polly, final question here, and we're going to bring Johnny Tapia in here. Johnny, come on in. Would you like to fight him again? Hey, if, if, if the money's right, it's about business. Hey. Man. Thanks for the opportunity, brother. Hey, Johnny, let me ask you here. First, let's start. Did you, why did you stand toe to toe? You had been so successful boxing. Romero, Canadu, some of the others by moving around. Why did you stand toe to toe? Uh, I just felt stronger than him. Uh, I was hurting him a lot and he kept on coming. First of all, I'd like to give a lot of thanks and praise to Jesus. Nobody got hurt and made the best man won. The best man you felt won? Yeah. You agree with the decision? The well, you know what happened. Everybody knows what happened. Uh, it was my last fight, with, so now let's move on to bigger and better things. What do you mean it was your last fight in this weight class or your last fight period? What are, what are you saying? It was my last fight with top rank, and uh, the better man won, so now I gotta go to John table for bigger and better things. You're, you're, you're bringing up some suspicions. If you want to elaborate it, I'll give you the opportunity. If not, are you saying that you did not lose this fight fair and square? Everybody knows what happened. What do you think? Well, I think you lost the fight, but I'm asking you. If you thought I lost the fight, I lost the fight. I'm not a poor loser. I give all the total respect to Mr. Ayala. He was in great shape. I was in great shape, and the better man won. Would you like to fight him again? I'd like to fight anybody. I'd come back. Uh, a rematch, get fight of the year. Hey, bigger and better things on the table. I still love you, Grandma and Grandpa. In Albuquerque, I'm still your champion. Does it just become a point when somebody goes 46 and 0, where time's up, you're 32 years of age, you're moving up in weight class. Let me ask you about the weight class first before we get to that question. Did the three pounds bother you? No, not at all. I'm only getting stronger. Uh, 46 and 0, I had a good record. I got one loss on my record. Now it's time to come back and uh, wish for. I'm not a poor loser. The better man won this. We've well, never lost before, so this is the first time we've seen it, and it sounds like by raising suspicions about top rank that, that, that no, you are, no, you no, are no casting suspicion. doubts. No, no suspicions. Uh, I lost. 
I give my head up and my hands up to Mr. Ayala. He took my belt, and I got to go and train harder for bigger and better things.